The pandemic has changed how we want to live, but also where we want to live. Places that seemed too remote before and lifestyles and routines once considered too placid are now given a second thought. Indeed, the farm life, once a weekend thing, is now a serious alternative. In this episode, we travel to the highlands of Cavite to see why more families from the city are turning to leisure farming and making this side of the province their second home. Plus, a visit to a new farm-to-fork restaurant in Tagaytay and the luxury villa Salamezi Alfonso countryside. Join us, I'm David Seldran, and this is Executive Class. The farm life. What's not to love about it? The fresh food, the healthy environment, the lush scenery, and the gentle outdoor life are all what we've been craving for even before the pandemic. To get a taste of that lifestyle, I'm driving to Alfonso in the highlands of Cavite, a place where farms still dominate the countryside and where urban sprawl and mass tourism haven't spoiled the experience yet. A few farms in the area offer overnight stays, but for those not ready to live like a local, perhaps renting a villa close to the farms of Alfonso would be a good first step. We're here. Well, if you haven't been back to this part of Cavite since the pandemic began, or in a long time, you'll be surprised with just how many New roads and expressways now connect this part of the province to Metro Manila and Batangas. In fact, I was expecting really rough roads along the way, which is why I brought along this Audi Q7. But this is a pleasant surprise, including this beautiful home. Morning. I found G House Alfonso while scrolling through Instagram, so it's still some kind of secret. The private villa is one of only two homes in an empty gated development, which means you've got all this space to yourself. Really loving it, I really am. But first things first, although the G house is in Alfonso, it's not in a farm per se, although it's very close to the farms nearby. But you do get the best of both worlds, which means a classy modern home in a cozy countryside setting. Just in case a native farmhouse is too rustic for you or a hotel suite is too small and impersonal. The G House is not a hotel. It's an actual home, which only happens to be rented out occasionally. That's what I love about it. It does feel like home here. Well, that's if your home also had a pool, a pool house, lush landscape gardens, and no neighbors to bother you. If you're expecting a farmhouse look, well, the G House ain't it. Nope, the style is more tropical modern than four country shabby chic. These are what the rooms downstairs look like. Cool. Literally, it's air conditioned. Yes, it's equipped with all the amenities you'd expect from an upscale home in the city. Plus, high-speed internet, hot water, and entertainment systems. Only the sounds and views of nature remind you, you're deep in the country. I love that this house has so much light and so many windows because this is what you want in a holiday, a view of the countryside. Okay, it's not quite authentic farm living, but what you get here is the best of both. The placid tempo of rural life with all the urban comforts when you need them. Well, you can, if you insist, bring your own beddings, your own appliances and other stuff. But as you can see, this house is fully equipped, so you don't really need to. 
Instead, just make sure you bring your clothes, your swimwear, and your favorite food and bottles of wine. And why not? Your own personal chef. Again, the G House is not a hotel, so meals are not included. Though the household staff is on call whenever you need them. And there's the option to book a chef. Most guests prefer to cook their own meals using produce from the nearby farms or dine out in nearby Tagaytay. But sometimes you just want to stay put and let a professional like Chef Migi do the work for you. Indeed, once you're settled in, it's hard to find any reason to leave. And that was the whole point of building a home in what seems like the middle of nowhere. Well, yeah, uh, I think the backstory here is that when we entered the subdivision or the village, it was an abandoned property. We just saw the potential in, in developing because of all the mature trees. Uh, we wanted a relaxed space and uh, with a lot of plants. So we saw that it was, uh, there was a lot of possibility. The owners took over what was originally an abandoned clubhouse and transformed it into their private estate. A place where friends and family could gather around a kitchen or around a pool and retreat to the many private corners in the property. Now, if I had this place, I'd keep it all to myself, Rocky. <laughs> what made you decide to open this up to, to guests? Well, initially that was the plan. We, we wanted the place for our own sets of families. Um, eventually, our family, our other friends, our other family members were asking if we can rent it in for, for their other families. And slowly it came from, it went from there to opening it up to um, a select number of people. But we made it a conscious effort and a decision not to list publicly because we still want to remain private uh, to a certain extent and welcome family members and and other people who are referred who can be our friends and who can be part of a bigger circle of friends. I guess that explains why it feels like home here. Guests are welcomed like old friends and family. Wow, this looks really healthy and yummy. Apparently, this kind of cuisine is a specialty of the chef we just met, Chef Migs Resonable, who's also your nephew, right? Miggy's menu showcases some of his favorite creations. Spicy pork and chicken bao buns, Vietnamese spring rolls, and naturally, fresh vegetable salad since we're so close to the farm. Lounging under the trees or chilling by the pool would be the ideal way to spend the afternoon here. Though there's much more to discover around the town of Alfonso. If you have a huge property with a swimming pool in the city, you might be wondering why even come here at all. Well, the answer is you're coming here for all the farms that are close by and the great restaurants, which are just a few minutes away. This house, the G House, is a perfect base for exploring Cavite and Tagaytay. Alfonso is one of the few places left in Cavite where farms outnumber subdivisions and commercial districts. And without traffic slowing you down or buildings obscuring the views, the drive through country roads is pleasant and scenic. The road network is surprisingly good too. And though some farms are harder to reach than others, most cars can get through. The Audi Q7 is a bit overkill, but I was expecting far worse on the roads here. Turns out, farm life isn't as isolated as I once thought it would be. If you check your Google Maps, you'd be surprised to find how many farms are listed in this corner of Alfonso alone. Most of them, however, are private farms, but if you make an appointment, they might let you visit. And guess what? You'll never know who you might meet inside one of them, like that guy over there. Sweet Spring Country Farm is owned by Kiko Pangilinan. You all know him as a senator, of course, but he's also been running this farm for more than a decade. Like many who started out farming as an escape or as an experiment, Sweet Spring has evolved into a medium-scale agribusiness producing vegetables, fruits, and livestock sold to restaurants and households. 
Not all weekend farmers go this far, but they all start out for similar reasons. It started out, I think, uh, after the 2008 financial crisis when, you know, parang there was a lot of soul searching among that generation saying, you know, what are we actually producing? And for whom? Right? And, and uh, a lot of money was invested in so much that just, you know, uh, really hit home in terms of, you know, tangible, concrete uh, results in terms of what you're focused on. And that's why people started going into, you know, going back to basics, farming, etc. And then, of course, this pandemic. More so. More so, because suddenly we don't know where to get our food. We can't go to the market. We can't go to you know, the grocery. Well, well, how do we get our food? So people started, had they renewed, you know, uh, how do you call it, interest in uh, food and agriculture and farming. And, and, uh, and that's good. Uh, and that should be the new, new normal. Farmers in Alfonso, whether of the leisure or professional variety, are equally blessed with a cool microclimate conducive to growing high-value crops like coffee, herbs, tomatoes, arugula, and lettuce. Taken seriously, farming can be a profitable business, not to mention the intangible rewards of farm living. Looking at your shirt, life is better on the farm. <laughs> There's also that element of mental health, also that element yes, of yes. Um, physical health of yes. living in the farm. I forget the Japanese term, but they call it tree bathing. And apparently, when you do tree bathing, your uh, blood pressure somehow, you know, is, is uh, put in check. Your pulse rate, you know, becomes normal. I don't know what to call it, but it somehow uh, affects everybody else, including us human beings. You know? and, and, uh, and, and so, yeah, there, there is the mental, physical, uh, emotional, how do you call it, high, when you're, when you're with nature and uh, are able to uh, experience it, really. Uh, when you see the organic lettuce, full, full grown, ready for harvest, and very tasty. And then this is, thing, this is the thing, pa, my two daughters who are both asthmatic, I mean, my two younger daughters, my two younger daughters who are both asthmatic, they have, you know, particularly about the food that we eat, you know, because they can break up into allergies. I can see what draws Kiko, his wife Sharon, their kids, and families like theirs to country living. But unless you're really committed to farming and the risks and costs that come with ownership, you might want to stick to day tours to farms like Sweet Spring. Otherwise, you can always rent a rest house close to a farm make it your base in the Cavite countryside. Perfect. I'm back just in time for sunset and for cocktails by the pool. But first, let's check out the view from the porch upstairs. There are many vantage points in the G house to view sunset, but if you want a view that includes the farms of Cavite and the mountains of Batangas, this is the best, the second floor balcony of the house. The view of the sun setting behind the mountains, the light dappling through the trees, and the cool gentle breeze, it's all part of farm life in Cavite. Yes, even if it's wrapped in luxury. Hey, Chef, thanks so much. I know this isn't what authentic farm life is about, but I'll take it anyway. The cocktails, the pool, the views, the entire thing. This is really, really beautiful. But even if you remove the cocktails, remove the pool, remove this beautiful home, it's still worth coming here, at least at this corner of Cavite if only for the quality of the light, the quality of the air. It's different. This is country living.
it's time to call it a night because I've got a full day ahead. When day breaks, I'll join some old friends for brunch in a new farm-to-table restaurant in Tagaytay nearby and end the day with a visit to a weekend farmer back in Alfonso for a more rustic farm stay experience. <laughs> <laughs>